Hey guys, it's Sarah from Canadian Victory Garden. Thanks for tuning in. So today's project is we're going to make a mushroom bed and we're going to link this to one of our old projects. So if you want to check out our video on the hugel culture, we're going to plant the mushroom bed just in front of the, bed, the hugel culture mound and maybe just a little bit up the side. So the kind of mushrooms we're going to be planting are wine cap mushrooms which we have uh, sawdust that's been inoculated with the spores. You get it from, well, we actually got it from uh, someone who runs a business, a local business, Mikey's Gourmet Mushrooms, and it's kind of damp feeling, which is good. You don't want it to dry out. And we're gonna be using cardboard, we're gonna be using straw, and I have some strawberries that I'm going to be transplanting into the same area. These are wine cap mushroom spores, which do like to be in the sun, but like all mushrooms, they like similar conditions of like a lot of moisture. Um, so we've planted one mushroom bed on the windward side of one of the mounds, and we're gonna do this one on the leeward side and see if either works better. So let's get started. So this is one of the Hugel culture mounds that we planted a couple of weeks ago. Obviously it's way too soon for anything to be decomposing yet. Um, and we didn't end up putting any mulch onto this one. So you do see a bit of the weeds kind of starting to grow out, which is fine. I have planted on top a couple of strawberry plants and this one didn't do so good. It is pretty windy there and it does dry out quickly. So we just kind of ran out of mulch. So I have lots for mulching and everything today. So we're going to get to that. This uh, little tree here is the reason that we made the mound in the first place. This is our one of our Korean nut pines, and it is very, very happy. Look at all that growth. You can probably take this out now, actually, now that I'm looking at it. I don't really need a marker for the tree anymore now that I have a huge mound. Um, planted a couple strawberries. This is false indigo. It's a perennial uh, nitrogen fixer and a couple more strawberries over there. So I'm going to plant some more strawberries kind of on the sides here and then down into this area and... Uh, then the next step is cardboard. So let's get digging in these strawberries before they get any drier than they already are. Nothing likes to get dried out on a nice sunny day like today. Um, I will also have some chives kind of mixed in with these strawberries just because the other bed had chives growing everywhere as chives do. And uh, that's fine, they, they are good companions. So we'll just leave them. Any of the weeds I am trying to pick out though. Who's next? You. Oop, not like that. Strawberries are great for pretty much any guild that you're trying to build or any purpose really because it makes you food. Um, they make a nice ground cover. They spread really easily. They seem to be pretty forgiving of like a lot of silly things you can do over watering and underwatering and such. So. I found in general in our area that strawberries are a great plant. Oh, it's so weedy over here. That's okay. I'm gonna be putting cardboard on top, like I said, which will kind of suffocate the weeds and give the strawberries a chance to spread out and grow. There's some more grass growing into that, so no thank you. Probably shouldn't really be transplanting strawberries this late in the season because most of these will be June. Uh, bearing strawberries, which means they're already flowering and getting ready to go. But I don't think the plant will die. I just might not get actual berries out of these this year, which is fine with me. We've got a lot of other berry plants. Ooh, that hole is way, way smaller than that big blob. So no rhyme or reason here. I'm not like trying to space them out a specific amount. We can really smell the chives, eh? Okay, so there, 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 there. Maybe one like here. I love this hoary hoary knife. I'm not really sure if this is what you're supposed to use it for, but like, it's my tool. I'm gonna use it how I want. It's got a serrated, serrated edge and a flat edge. Neither of them are actually sharp, but it will cut like obviously into soil quite well. So strawberries are in, not watered yet. I'm gonna put down the cardboard first and like the first layer of mulch, and then we'll do the watering. Some of this cardboard's already been 
pre-moistened and it's still a little damp and some of it is not. I don't really think it matters either way. So mushrooms are not plants. They don't want to grow in the soil. Mushrooms are the fruiting bodies of a fungi and fungi decomposes things. So we're trying to give them a carbon source to consume and to be happy enough to produce fruiting bodies, which is what we eat the mushrooms, the caps. So uh, brown, only brown, no stickers, cardboard is carbon rich. I haven't covered the whole mound yet. I've really just got the this side and just over the top to make sure the roots of those strawberries right on top are covered and protected. Um, you know, mulch helps to keep in moisture among other things. And it is kind of hard to spread straw to keep space for all these new little plantings. So this is kind of step one was put down the cardboard. Step two was put down the straw. Step three, I'm gonna water now because it's really dry and warm today. We don't have a ton of wind and this should get more shelter from the wind on this side, but I don't want to put the spores onto something that's too dry and then have them die right away. So also I'm sure the strawberry plants would love a drink. I wonder if they're, oh, right into my shoe. Good job me. I was just going to say, I wonder if I water from the top, if that'll help water underneath everything too. What do you think? smush it all down a bit. What's that? Waterfall. Well the whole idea is this mound is supposed to be sequestering water right so if I water anywhere near it it should be soaking into the logs and stuff underneath and holding on to it and then the roots of all these plants are supposed to be reaching out for those consistently moist logs. So I'm gonna wet all the whole I'm gonna wet my kneeling pad <laughs> I'm gonna wet the whole area that I put down, trying to encourage when the spores get going to spread out their little hyphae here, there, and everywhere. The hyphae are like the little roots of the fungi that, if you've ever had like wood chip mulch that you've moved around after it's sat for a year, you'll see those little white kind of strings running all through. That's fungal hyphae. Think of them like the roots. That looks pretty nice and wet, huh? Welcoming bed. So 
Oh, this is inoculated sawdust moistened for wine cap mushrooms. And I'm going to spread it around on the straw now. Broadcasting it like I like to broadcast my seeds. I don't know. We'll just try it everywhere. It does smell really mushroomy. What do you think? Up the side or no? Sure. All right, experiment up the side a little bit. We'll see what she does. My sister has a funny phrase for broadcasting. She calls it chaos gardening, just throwing things where they land and that's where they grow. I guess that's pretty much what we're doing right now. I want to try to concentrate it mostly on the inside because I know the outside edges are going to dry out faster. Oh, I can't reach it with all these logs here. Who left this pile of lumber here? I know. It was my little wall that was protecting the tree. Oh, I only have so much straw, so we've got to put it all in this bed. Okay, I've only got so much cardboard, so this all has to go here. So I guess the idea is they eat the sawdust a little bit, they eat the straw a little bit, they get to the cardboard. And then you would assume that everything in this bed, once it starts breaking down like that, would be inoculated also with mushroom spores, so then you can move it around your property and make more beds. Maybe feed it by adding wood chips. I honestly don't know. I'll have to look into it if this starts producing anything. I'm going to try to keep it kind of so that it will be protected still by the hill, by the mound. I mean, yeah, they like sun or they'll tolerate sun, but how far does that go for a mushroom? There's a lot in here. Oops. Sorry, strawberries. So now I just need to mulch all this in so that the spores don't dry out while they're doing their work. And trying not to bury all the plants I just covered, I just transplanted here. So I tried to go for a thicker layer of mulch to help keep all the moisture in, uh, and then I had to kind of dig all my plants back out again to make sure that they didn't totally get covered with the mulch. And I think when I water it in, it should flatten back out a bit again here. So this is one way to do it. Uh, what what do we use all together? Cardboard from packages. Would you say like a bale and a half altogether of straw? Yeah. Of course, the spores, the bag of spores. That bag that I was using, um, he's got it set up so you can just like cut a little slit in the bag and have it grow right out of there. But we wanted to try to do like a longer lasting bed here and get some companion planting stuff going. Uh, so straw or wood chips, whatever you have, cardboard and the inoculant, and that's really all you need. You don't even really need the bed. The mound, I mean, we were just trying something to see what we could make that mound do for us. It's way flatter with all the water. Okay, next watering can. <laughs> so this is the finished product. Our mound with a hopefully a mushroom bed and a strawberry patch in front of it. 
all watered in and ready to go. I put the rocks out just in case the wind touches the cardboard while it's still decomposing. Looks nice and watered in. With any luck, I'm not even sure how long it'll take, so we'll check back in if we start seeing some mushrooms popping up. And this was our practice bed, which is on the windward side on, for this bed. So we're testing both directions to see if one works better than the other. But pretty much the same cardboard mulched over top with straw, with straw and in between the inoculated wine cap mushrooms. This one has strawberries also, and then it does have a valerian plant on the mound too. My plan is to plant a tomato on the other side, on the leeward side of that. So this was uh, one of many projects we have planned for this spring and summer. So thanks for tuning in. And next time we will be doing a different kind of tomato trellising. So check back for that video. Bye.